Hello friends, I'm Maxi Gorov and in this video I will share two simple secrets on how to saw a large log into perfectly straight lumber with a chainsaw. There will be no usage of sawmill attachments or any board cutting jigs. Using my method you will use two to three times less gas than when using your chainsaw in a sawmill setup like logo saw or Alaska mill. The lumber cuts will be even smoother and just as straight. Most importantly, you will do it much faster, you won't need any additional chainsaw attachments and will be able to use a less powerful chainsaw for cutting the same size boards. My log cutting method works well for both soft and hardwoods. I use it to saw lumber from oak, beech, aspen, black elder, northern pine and willow. I've done it in the summer heat and in the winter frost and nevertheless my board cutting technique never failed me. I admit it sounds too good to be true. This is why I will show you how I arrived to this simple yet effective lumber cutting method in detail. You'll be able to see a couple of log sewing techniques in comparison as well. I have tried many traditional lumber cutting techniques while building my log cabin at Ladaga Lake. For example, this simple technique using a two board guide screwed to the log works well and you can cut boards as wide as your saw's guide bar. If the side of your chainsaw isn't flat like mine, you can fix a small piece of plywood to its side. This method is preferable if you need to make a shallow horizontal cut to an already installed log. For instance, you could do this if you need to make a horizontal cut in a log for a window or a door. I successfully used this method while building my log cabin and even though it is old, I would recommend it to a friend. However, I decided to improve the method and build a chainsaw attachment similar to the Logo Soul Mini Sawmill. If you own a welder and a side grinder, you can make one from scrap metal in a couple of hours, maybe a day. There are many good videos on YouTube about how to make a sawmill similar to mine, so I will show the progress very briefly. The geometry and design of its frame are not important. I made one with the frame's end open to be able to saw extra thick logs from two sides. As you're probably thinking already, this sawmill attachment works the same as the DIY guide made from two boards. Its only real improvement is that once you make your first cut, the board's freshly sawn flat surface can then be used as a guide for cutting the next board. In other words, you only need an additional guide to make the first cut. This is pretty much the only advantage over the first method. I was actually quite disappointed with the sawmill's performance and here's why. When you use the whole length of the guide bar to saw a log, each tooth that comes in contact with wood creates some resistance. There are 15 to 30 saw teeth or more in contact with wood at any given moment. And even if you have a very powerful chainsaw, they will each take only small shavings or even dust because the depth gauge is usually set to 25 thousandths of an inch 0.7 millimeter and it is two to three times less in ripping chains designed for cutting parallel to wood grain. You can see that my chainsaw is struggling and producing fine dust instead of long shavings because each tooth can't grab enough wood. As a result, your saw is burning a lot of gas the chain is dulling and your work is barely moving. I hope I was able to clearly demonstrate the deficiencies of this method. The good thing is there is a simple solution. When I was sewing 18 inch 45 cm boards for my log cabin's door, I tried to use my sawmill attached to a larger chainsaw. This came with poor results. My new, supposedly very powerful steel MS-260 that I bought for this purpose kept stalling on such a white cut. I was forced to try my freehand lumber cutting technique again. That day, I came to a final conclusion that cutting lumber freehand with a sauce tip 
is a lot faster. The technique doesn't require any additional attachments and produces straight lumber with a clean cut. So my first lumber sewing secret is I keep only two to three chains teeth in contact with the wood at any given moment using the saw's lower tip instead of the whole length of the guide bar, which would be up to 30 or more teeth at once. As a result, each tooth produces thick and long shavings. I will repeat it. Use only the guide bar's lower tip to saw a log into lumber. I first tested the tip cutting method when I needed to quickly cut 20, 26 feet, 8 meters skinny logs into two halves for my cabin's roof decking. I only had one day to do the job and when you have such a tight schedule you need to come up with good techniques to save time. Now it is time to reveal my second secret of how to sew a log into straight lumber with even thickness along the whole length of the board. I will explain the principle of the technique using an oak log that I got from my friend at his farm. First of all, we need to prep the log for sewing. We need to raise it above the ground to prevent the chain from dulling and debark the log with a shovel or a draw shave. I also cut the side of the log as it had some embedded sand on it. The next important step is to immobilize the log in such a way that it stays put till you cut the last slab. I hammered two stakes, one on each side and screwed them to the log. Note. Here you can see that the log was cut into three parts, but the central third is still hanging on the stakes. If you have a tree that is still immobilized by its branches, you don't have to use holding stakes. Next, we need to lay out the cuts. I will use a falling bird cherry tree as an example. You can use a rope or a bungee cord as a guide. Just stretch it between two nails and put a couple of staples or bent nails in between. I was using a black cord in the video, which is not the best. A brighter bungee cord with stripes is a better choice. The only thing is you have to be careful not to run into a staple as a properly sharpened chain is very important for a straight cut. The chain has to have evenly worn sharp teeth on both sides. I usually file my ripping chains to a 5 to 10 degrees angle. All of the depth gauges should have the same setting. Otherwise, the saw won't be able to make a straight cut even if you use a guide or a sawmill attachment. For example, if the left teeth are more worn than the right ones, your chainsaw will veer to the right. This is a bushcraft saw sharpening vise that you can make in a matter of minutes. I used a tall stump of a falling birch tree for the purpose. It makes the sharpening process efficient and easy. What you're looking at is not an ideal cut, but for a slab of this size it is better than needed because once the slab dries, the wood will move and it will need to be jointed anyway. But let's get back to our oak log. So I wanted to make all the cuts in one plane. The plane is determined by vertical and horizontal layout lines and the saw's guide bar should cut a log along both lines at once. I noticed. If you make shallow cuts with the bar's bottom tip while using a swinging motion, you automatically get perfect vertical cuts. Again, the second secret of the ideal cut is in the swinging motions. I know, it is hard to trust the chainsaw to keep the vertical plane, but that's what you need to do. You just let the saw cut the way it wants to cut, while constantly swinging it back and forth, holding the saw exactly the same way for each cut. 
letting the saw cut the weight once without even checking for a vertical layout line is not easy psychologically, but with practice it is possible. All of the cuts will be strictly parallel. I have cut many, many logs in the last years, just to be able to say that. As it often happens, it takes years to acquire simple wisdom. Now I have to repeat myself. My swinging method works well only if your saw's chain is sharpened properly, but that is a necessary condition of any lumber cutting method. In conclusion, I wanted to ask you guys for advice. I no longer trust my steel MS260 as it gave me repetitive problems even after it was repaired by a dealer. I always meticulously followed Steel's manuals and procedures and used original Steel's products. My 15-year-old MS-180 chainsaw was always refueled from the same canister and it is still going strong, while my MS-260 lasted only for two months of fairly light duty, giving troubles right out of the box. So what chainsaw of comparable size do you think would be a good choice for cutting logs into lumber using my method? P.S. During the last four years, I was gaining experience in lumber drying using different novel approaches. I'm planning to organize and publish my research results here on Advoca Makes soon. If you liked this video, perhaps you could share it with your friends. Let good people watch good videos. This is Maxi Gorov, St. Petersburg, Russia. P.P.S. I only produce one or two videos max a month. And if you don't want to miss new content like this, you can click on the bell reminder for notifications. I hope to see you back on Advoca Makes.